Hi, I'm Carl Soule, Technical Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and welcome to another episode of Short and Sweet. Today we're going to be talking about this new revolution with DSLR cameras, and I want to take you guys through some of the specific features inside of Premiere Pro CS5 that are geared towards uh, shooting and working with DSLR footage. Now, if you're shooting on a camera like this, um, one of the challenges that people have faced with these cameras is the fact that they use a very high bit rate H.264 codec and uh, even though these are just QuickTime files, in most cases people are going through the hassle of transcoding this footage before they can bring it in and actually start the editing process. With Premiere Pro CS5 and the new Adobe Mercury engine, that's kind of a thing of the past. If you're working with Premiere Pro, you can work natively with the footage right off of this camera, including being able to check shots right off of the card in the camera. If you need to, you can uh, on set just pull the card right out of the camera and take this, put it in a card reader, and actually look at this footage um, right from within Premiere Pro, and you should be able to see it at uh, full frame rate, full playback, without any problem. Now let me show you a couple of things inside of Premiere Pro to get you started. The first thing is when you're setting up a new sequence, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, the new button here and choose sequence. And when I do that, there's now, inside the uh, sequence presets, there's a new folder called Digital SLR. So if I bring this down, I can choose a, a timeline sequence that matches exactly what I'm shooting on my camera. So in this situation, uh, on this camera, I've been shooting at 1080p, 24 frames per second. So I can go ahead and select a timeline of that. And I can go in here and I can choose. And I'll just call this one uh, the same thing as the preset here. We'll just call this 1080p. 24 and hit OK. So now I have a new blank timeline here. Now I've taken uh, some of the footage, I've copied this off of the card in the camera and I've put it on my hard drive here, but if I want to look at this footage, I can just double click on a clip. This is going to open up over in my source monitor. I can start the playback of this footage and if I want to, I can hit the uh, tilde key on my keyboard and I can blow this up full frame. Now when I'm doing this, um, depending on your hardware, in most cases you should be able to work at full frame rate here. But a couple new features to be aware of, um, there are these new controls here for playback resolution and pause resolution here. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this to full resolution for playback and for pausing here because um, we have really gone through and optimized the H.264 codec that decodes these files and since we're now fully 64-bit, multi-core optimized, we can play back this footage without any problem, without any drop in frame rate here. So you can see I'm going through and I'm playing back this footage. I can use JKL uh, editing on my keyboard here. I can play this backwards. I can mark an in point, go through mark an out point on my footage. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to my regular interface here, I can now take this footage and drop it right on my timeline here and we'll go ahead and just expand that out. So we can easily go through and we can take this footage and merge this together. Now another thing to note here, I'm going to go ahead and go into my new sequence panel here again because I want to talk about one particular preset that we have in here. There's a new preset that's called DSLR 1080p 30 at 2997. And this is really crucial if you're using the older firmware builds on cameras like the Canon 5D Mark II, um, those cameras were shooting at a true 30 frames per second. And so this was creating a lot of problems with mixed time bases if you were shooting on, let's say, a 1D and a 5D in the same shoot. Um, using this particular preset, Premiere Pro will conform your footage to 2997 and one of the things that's always been a real benefit of Premiere Pro is you can mix and match time bases on one timeline. So if you're shooting 1080p 30 and you're planning on matching, uh, mixing and matching between footage from let's say the 5D and the 7D, uh, the 5D and the Rebel T2i, and you haven't used the new firmware build that adds true 2997 playback, if you have legacy footage, this would be the preset that you would want to work with. Now the great thing about this is you don't have to worry about uh, your graphics card for doing this. I know there's a lot of in interest in this Adobe Mercury engine and this is something that doesn't require GPU acceleration. You can actually work with this footage and play this back and I even do this on a regular basis on my MacBook Pro laptop. But if you do have a GPU that's on the 
uh, approved list, what that gets you is the ability to, to go in and actually do color grading and color timing right on the timeline inside of Premiere Pro and not have to render your footage. So here I've got a piece of footage that I've dropped on my timeline here. Um, if I go into the effects panel, in fact, let me go ahead and turn this on. I don't have uh, GPU acceleration currently turned on. So I'm going to go to project, project settings, general, and we'll go ahead and change the video rendering here to the GPU acceleration mode. And we'll delete the previews here in this choice. I don't have any preview files at this point, but I'm not going to use them anyway. And so now, at this point, I'm working with this footage. If I wanted to, I could come in and I could take something like a three-way color corrector or RGB curves, and I can drop it on this footage and not have to worry about rendering preview files. So in this example here, let me go ahead and use my uh, effects panel here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the accelerated effects filter. That's this little icon here in the effects tab. And when I do that, you'll see all these different effects are accelerated provided I have the correct graphics card in the system. So you'll notice there's a lot of different options here for working with color. So I can come in here and maybe use, I, I like working with curves. I like the idea of sticking with kind of a curves metaphor from, uh, uh, from what I know in Photoshop. So I can take something like an RGB curves effect, drop it on here, go to the effect controls, and now I have a nice uh, little curves adjuster here. So I can go in and maybe just give this, uh, shift the gamma a little bit on this particular clip. Um, maybe on this particular shot I want to boost the, uh, the reds a little bit or maybe drop, knock the reds down, make the shot a little bit cooler here. So you can see I'm seeing that update immediately. And as I play this clip back here, you can see that it's not affecting the quality of the playback. It's, not, it's, it's actually playing back in full 32-bit linear color space as I'm doing this. Now you'll notice in the effects bin there's also a couple of other modifiers here, a couple of other filters. Um, this particular effect is a YUV effect, meaning it keeps, even though I'm looking at red, green, and blue curves here, it's actually keeping the clip in its native uh, color space. And this is also a 32-bit effect, meaning Premiere Pro is working in a 32-bit floating point color space. So if I take one effect and I blow out a particular area of the video, I'm not actually losing any detail in there. If I take another effect and darken that part of the video down, um, the detail will be preserved in that part of the video. So very, very powerful capability. So hopefully I've just kind of shown you the ability you can take and work with footage directly off this camera, no rendering necessary. We have presets that fit all of the major DSLR cameras out there. And if you have the GPU acceleration on your desktop system, you can also go in and do color correction. Again, no wor worrying about rendering preview files. So it's a pretty powerful system for anybody interested in shooting on uh, a DSLR camera. So, if uh, you're not familiar, you can definitely uh, get a hold of me on Twitter via Carl Soule is my handle on Twitter. I also have a separate blog at blogs.adobe.com forward slash video road. And I've even created a new blog that's specifically focusing on the new DSLR market called rebelshooters.com. So you can also get a hold of me there. Thanks again. My name is Carl Soule, and thanks for watching.